Imagine, if you will, pitcher warming up, batter on deck, taking his practice swings, first baseman, shortstop, second baseman, third baseman, whipping the ball around the horn, the outfielders throwing it back and forth. It's baseball. It's America's pastime. The boys of summer. You know the cliches. But that's not what we're here to talk about. Now, as I told you to imagine the pitcher warming up, the batter on deck, the infielders throwing the ball around the horn, the dugout chattering, you had a visual concept in your own mind of what you were seeing, right? You did. Everybody does that. It's like when you read a book. Everybody's perception of that book is different. What you see in your mind of the characters, it's different from the guy next to you. It's just different. Why am I giving you this illustration? Well, today we're going to talk about radio. Specifically, sports radio. And even more specifically, play-by-play -play announcers. On WXSM, the Sports Monster in Johnson City this morning, they were talking to Jim Hawthorne, the voice of the LSU Tigers. He's been there 29 years. I was 15 years old when this man started his job with the Tigers. John Ward retired after 31 seasons as voice of the Vols. John Ward, in my opinion, was the best play-by-play -play announcer that has ever lived. Now, I haven't heard them all, obviously, but I've heard a bunch of them. As you guys well know, radio and radio broadcasting is one of my passions. It's something I would love to get back into. Imagine, if you will, also, young people, a world without the Internet, a world without 56-inch flat-screen plasma TVs with picture-in-picture. A world where you cannot sit in California and watch your favorite team in North Carolina, Tennessee, Georgia, Florida, Alabama, wherever, live, streaming on the internet. Nowadays, with ESPN, all the sports channels, conceivably, a sports nut like myself could have a big screen TV with quad screen where you split it into four channels. I could conceivably watch however many TVs I can pile into my living room. That's how many games I could watch. Even the soldiers today, our, our troops, our brave soldiers, men and women fighting overseas for our freedom, have the luxury of being able to follow their favorite sports team. Why is radio so important to me? Because as a child growing up, I can vividly remember tuning in on a Saturday, trying to find, desperately trying to find, my volunteers playing football. When I was a young little chubby BVD, I remember my dad and my papaw listening to the Tennessee games in the living room or the den at my papaw's house on Saturdays. Well, why weren't you watching them on TV, BVD? They cover all the Tennessee games in the know. Back in the 70s, as I was growing up, and a lot of you guys can relate to this. There was one college football game on on Saturdays. Back then, you know, you were lucky if you had a black and white TV, ABC's Wild, Wide World of Sports, or NBC, or CBS, that's it. And you might have gotten a PBS channel, you know, Sesame Street and all that stuff. But on Saturdays, there was the college football game of the week. And nine Saturdays out of ten, guess who was on TV? Notre Dame. Now, you ask me why I can't stand Notre Dame? There's one reason right there. Uh, so, AM radio will always be important to me. Hopefully, it is a resource that will never die. I know the internet is threatening to eliminate radio at some point in the future, but I don't think this will happen. Let me tell you a few stories. I remember one Saturday in Columbus, Ohio, I was 12, 13 years old. It was my second season of being a rabid, die-hard Tennessee fan. 
my first Tennessee football game, as I've stated before, was 1980. That's the first time I actually got to go to a game. From that game forward, man, I was all over some Tennessee football, even from Ohio. But in Ohio, it was Ohio State, it was the Big Ten, you know, there was no Tennessee football up there until I discovered AM radio. Now my uncle, he was a budding radio man as a DJ at WIBK in Knoxville and I spent a summer with him and I learned a little bit about radio. So back home in Ohio that fall when football rolled around, all of my friends are talking about their Buckeyes and watching them on TV and I'm thinking, man, I sure would love to be in Knoxville right now. So I went out, saved my allowance, bought me a little $4 transistor radio. Young kids may not know what transistor radios are. Some of you do, some of you don't. But they were these little bitty radios with one little shitty speaker, an AM and an FM dial on it, and a little antenna that stuck up. Usually back then, a 9-volt battery was all you needed. So here I am in the second story of our home on a Saturday afternoon with this radio up to my ear, turning the dial just a, just a click at a time, begging for some little hint of John Ward on the radio. Finally, I would get it. <laughs> Staticky as hell. You just barely could hear the announcers, but I could hear it clear as day. My mom would come up and hear that static. Keith, what in the shit are you doing? Shh! Tennessee's about to score! That's what I would do on Saturdays. Well, finally, we moved to Raleigh, North Carolina in 1983. A little bit closer to Tennessee. Well, as some of you may or may not know, when the sun goes down at dark, they switch the satellites on AM radio, and you can pick a lot of stations up better. That's how it used to be. I'm not so sure about now. Eventually, I caught on to this. I started trying to pick up Tennessee basketball games, and I can remember clear as a bell one night picking up Tennessee and Virginia Commonwealth. Dale Ellis played for Tennessee, and I'll never forget it. They were at Virginia Commonwealth. And I remember picking that game up. Man, I was so excited. It was clear as day. And uh, I picked that game up, and I'll be damned if Tennessee didn't lose that night. The reason I'm even talking about this is you hear a lot of people talk about radio announcers not being important. Um, what's their point other than to give stats at halftime? Well, harking back to times I was telling you about when there was only one game on TV. The sports nuts are gathered around their radio on Saturday. The only picture that you have of that game is what the broadcaster relays to you. That's why John Ward always said, I never called a game in my life. And I used to think, what does he mean I never called a game in my life? He's called hundreds of games. John Ward described an athletic sporting event. Marches from the formation facing the south end zone where the Tennessee fans here and throughout the country listening to this broadcast begin to experience the feeling of excitement as the University of Tennessee flies of the Southland marching band marches from the formation facing the south end zone where the national anthem has just been played and sung into the traditional team stretching for the east band AM radio is a, a dying breed and for those of you who have not experienced AM radio I urge you on a Friday night or on a Saturday to tune your radio in to your local high school football game or your college favorite college team on Saturday or if you like baseball how I started this video off with baseball if that's what you like find yourself a, a, a game on radio sit down away from your TV away from your internet 
away from your flat screen plasma TV with 50,000 channels and sit there and listen to a sports broadcaster do his work. What did he do? All he did was score for the Big Orange. I hope this video has enlightened some of you to the wonderful world of radio broadcasting. I could give you countless descriptions of John Ward plays, but I'm not John Ward. I'm merely me. I don't hope to be John Ward. There will never be another John Ward. But at some point along the way, I would love to have my shot at sitting in a booth in a crowded little smoky press box two stories high on a Friday night calling a high school football game. To me, that is utopia. the voice of your Vols. Huh? Who's the play-by-play -play guy for your team? Do you like him? Do you not like him? Tennessee fans, are you used to Bob Kessling and Tim Priest yet? No, they're not John Ward and Bill Anderson, but I've kind of gotten used to them over the years. 